What's going on? It's Friday, March 13th. Let's talk PlayStation. Pretty good news week, a lot of interesting stuff to talk about, so let's get right in. PlayStation Mobile, uh, the separate, uh, you know, mini game service that was on PlayStation Vita, PlayStation certified devices, which basically meant smartphones or tablets and stuff, that is basically getting shut down. So July 15th uh, of this year is when basically the store, I believe, will be shut down, so you can't, like, buy new games or anything like that. And then September 10th of this year is when you're going to be not able to even re download purchases from that store right so even though uh, the store is gone they'll still give you some access time to re-download previously purchased games if maybe you kept them deleted off your device or something but once September 10th comes you won't even be able to re-download them um, and you have a, basically a certain set time frame whether you're on Vita or you know Android smartphone or something to get your device certified authenticated so that you know your device will be able to read the um, the content ID to actually prove ownership of the titles and start them and everything. It's kind of a long, you know, annoying process that they've detailed, which I can link you to below if you want to read a little bit more about it. But essentially, PlayStation Mobile is done for, which, you know, sucks, but at the same time, it's like you had to have seen this coming. Um, I don't know how many people use PlayStation Mobile, but I can't imagine it's a lot. Uh, I used to review a crap load of PlayStation Mobile games like uh, early on when I started this this YouTube channel. You can look at some of my really old videos like uh, back to like 2012, early 13, where I reviewed a lot of PS Mobile games. Um, you know, because they were cheap, they were affordable, they were basically smartphone ports. Uh, a lot of them were absolute crap, like starting developers. Uh, Sony gave a lot of easy access for developers to get onto that service. Uh, at first it was just $100 for the dev kit, then they made it absolutely free to create games on it, but $100 to publish titles on PlayStation Mobile. Uh, but either way, support for it was just not there. Um, you know, they, they had no advertising going into it or anything. People had no idea these games existed. There were a few gems on there, but either way, PlayStation Mobile is essentially done, which is a shame, but like I said, if you're not going to support it, then you might as well cut it off, and that's exactly what they're doing. All right, moving on, uh, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita will be launching in China March 20th. Now, previously, they were supposed to launch, I believe, in January in China. It's a big market. It's good that they're finally doing that. You know, China had a console ban for, for many of years. It's recently lifted. Microsoft launched there, and now Sony is trying to do the same thing. Like I said, they did uh, have to delay that back in January, so now they are, they are launching PS4 and Vita March 20th. Uh, that's pretty much it. Hopefully they uh, do well over there. Microsoft didn't really have a great launch over there, despite the fact that it was looking pretty good uh, pre-release-wise there. But either way, it's a big market, and hopefully that's a, a big opportunity for Sony to sell a lot more PS4 and Vitas. Because uh, uh, recently, uh, just in North America, the NPD came out, and they once, once again uh, beat Microsoft in North America and sold a good amount of PlayStation 4s. Um, I, yeah, the, I just can't believe they still got this momentum going it's crazy so right after last week of let's talk playstation a lot of good interviews were coming out from gdc uh one interesting thing was shuhei Yoshida was discussing the uh the recent uh things of like ddos attacks how psn's always getting attacked uh phil spencer from microsoft also commented on this and how he's not happy about it either uh, but the interesting thing is shuhei said that uh psn is attacked basically every single day in some way shape or form the network is always attacked whether it's ddos or any other form of network attacks um, which is not surprising, of course, because, I mean, it's, you know, PlayStation Network is a very big thing, like, it's a big multi-million dollar sort of entity, uh, same with Microsoft, I'm sure they get attacked every single day, I'm sure tons of websites get attacked every single day, like, of course, it's a natural occurrence, but it's just... You know, when you finally hear about it from Sony themselves, it's interesting to, to kind of see it from that point of view. Um, you got to figure that they uh, have a lot to work, have a lot on their hands. That's not necessarily to de to de to defend them, I guess, because uh, PSN is like down all the time, and um, you know Microsoft's been struggling recently with this too. Um, you know, it's not like giving them the benefit of the doubt, but you can kind of figure, you know, how many engineers you need on staff and everything. And, how frustrating I was I would assume it gets when you're on the job handling that every single day I don't know um, just interesting to hear moving on Sony's TV streaming service PlayStation view is going to be launching very very soon apparently in two weeks uh, gonna be launching in three North American cities Chicago uh, New York City and Philadelphia I believe um, they're gonna have a lot of channels CBS Comedy Central stuff like that uh, one interesting omission is I believe ESPN is not gonna be on there um, but either way, it seems like Sony's really gearing up for this thing. They're still planning to launch PlayStation View uh, across, I believe, all of North America uh, by the end of 2015. Uh, so it's good to see that they're keeping up with this initiative because we're hearing absolutely nothing about it. It seems like only every few weeks we hear something slightly new about PlayStation View. But um, it seems like it's moving along. Uh, so hopefully there's no delays or anything like that because uh, 
you know, delays suck, and we'll be getting back. To, we'll be getting to to that shortly, delay wise. But either way, it's good to see something is keeping the something. One ball is rolling, basically. All right, so one really big news story this past week was the rumor and then the eventual confirmation from Sony themselves about PlayStation 4 firmware 2.50, or it's called Yuki Mora, uh, which is interesting because you know Sony like almost never did the sort of naming process of firmware updates. Uh, and the last update 2.0 was named Masamune or something. Uh, so it's, I find it interesting that they're doing this now, like naming their firmwares. But either way, uh, 2.50, so it was rumored and then it was totally confirmed. Uh, big, big uh, update, basically. It is 2.50. You know, it's going to be giving uh, suspend and resume. Finally, that's a big feature with PlayStation 4. You can put your PS4 in standby mode. And you're not going to lose any progress during your games or recently opened applications. So if you shut that thing down in the middle of, um, you know, Bloodborne next month um, or this month, turn it back on uh, from rest mode you're gonna be like right back where you were you don't even have to like do a hard start of the uh, of the application again um, a lot of accessibility features so you can increase the font size uh, you can bold text invert colors for like colorblind people and everything um, you can zoom in to certain sections of like the screen uh, again a lot like a lot of accessibility features uh, a lot of cool trophy enhancements. Uh, the big feature is there for you know trophy sorting is in there. Um, the big thing is uh, I'm really proud about this one. <laughs> excited about this one. Um, if you have a zero percent trophy you know l list on your like on your trophy list, you can delete that now. So if you started a game one time and you didn't earn a single trophy in it and you never played the game again, you can delete that off of your trophy history, um, which is awesome. I can't believe they actually added that feature. I feel like that's something that Sony would never do because it seems like such a very small core audience really wants something like that, but it's cool that they actually did add that because I want that. I'm addicted to PSNProfiles.com. I'm always on there seeing my percentage of like com total completed games. So now that I can finally delete some 0% games, that's going to like increase my percentage and I know I'm, I'm weird, but... That's in there. Uh, also, remote play and share play. There's going to be support for 60 frames per second. So if you've got the bandwidth, internet speed, and all that to handle that, you are going to now have the accessibility to do that. So 60 frames per second for remote play and share play. Other oddball things are like you can upload your gameplay footage to um, uh, to Daily Motion. I believe it's going to take a screenshot now every single time you earn a trophy. You can do a Facebook friend search. Um, I, there's a couple other features I think I'm missing, but those are some of the basic core pretty important feature still nothing like dlna uh i would have to assume that's going to be after this um in terms of when the firmware is going to be coming out sony is saying uh very very soon no specific time frame i'm going to assume late march early april but either way awesome features and it's great that we're seeing this a lot sooner than we expected or at least i expected um I'm just, I'm pumped. Moving on to our next news story, in an unsurprising and quite frankly anticlimactic turn of events, Titanfall 2 was basically announced and confirmed for PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Founder, uh, Respawn founder and CEO Vince Zampella totally confirmed it, saying yeah, it's coming, blah blah blah. Um, you know, I was questioned a few things about like, well, what's he going to do differently with this one? Is it going to be more single player content? Would he have uh, liked to have done the first Titanfall differently in some aspects? Uh, you can read all about that in the news story I'll link you to, but uh, more or less, yeah, Titanfall 2 is going to be coming, which I'm, I'm sure we're all, well, uh, we all like expected and we also expected it would come to PS4. Um, we've been over this, uh, you know, Titanfall 1 story a billion times over again. Titanfall 1 was totally going to come to PS4, or at least that's exactly what they had intended to do. It was a business decision between EA um, and Microsoft to do that. Um, you know, Respawn didn't really have a whole lot of say in it, apparently. Um, I guess Sony presented, you know, EA numbers saying, here's what you could have made if you released the game on PS3 and PlayStation 4. Uh, and, it, you know, Microsoft's, you know, payoff basically t totally wouldn't have covered it and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's anticlimactic because, like, Titanfall was a big name, you know, when it released. Uh, there was a lot of pre-release going into that. Um, like, it was a big, like, AAA title coming out, right? And it's just, like, to announce the sequel in this way, with just, like, you know, news stories online, just some random day, um, seems very, like, you know, again, anticlimactic. That's why I tell people, like, you know, um, E3 and stuff, like, that's, like, when you're going to see announcements, because, like, developers and publishers, they want to save all that big, juicy stuff for, like, a big, you know, sort of reveal. You know, people wonder like, oh, why? How come games aren't getting announced, uh, and all that, and every the why is the industry so boring or whatnot? It's like, well, they want to save those announcements for stuff. You know, they're not gonna just. Uh, and wh why don't de why do developers lie in interviews and stuff? It's like, well, they're not gonna reveal their game to you in an, in an interview. They want to save that stuff for um, a big reveal. So, but either way, that's uh, this is ha that's happening. Um, moving on to our next news story, uh, Uncharted Four, uh, the big one. 
Uh, the biggest news story of the past week, I think, um, it's getting delayed. Delayed into spring 2016. The game was on track for this year, has been delayed to 2016. Naughty Dog says they need more time. Apparently the game is a lot more ambitious than they originally thought it was going to be. Um, standard delay stuff, they're basically saying they need more time, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. Um, which is totally cool. You know, I mean, I, I think a lot of us should completely understand what it's like uh, with games nowadays and development. You know, a lot of people are pretty burned with uh, getting games early and them not working. Uh, Assassin's Creed, you know, uh, Drive Club recently, uh, Master Chief Collection, a lot of games coming out not being uh, quote-unquote unfinished. So, you know, if a developer needs more time, by all means, give them more time. I'm actually genuinely surprised. Like, I, you know, like, and Greg Miller apparently, like, you know, he called that Uncharted 4 was going to get delayed. And good on him. I mean, he, he nailed it. But I would have guessed that it would have come out this year. I don't know. I'm actually surprised because it seemed like, you know, 2014, like, throughout most of 2014, it's like we didn't know anything about Uncharted 4, which is understandable because the game was far out. But once you got to late 2014 and early this year, 2015, uh, tons of Naughty Dog interviews. We finally saw gameplay for it. Um, it just seemed like every single week you log on to the internet and you'd see a new news story about Naughty Dog talking about Uncharted 4 in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and, and Naughty Dog also doing interviews about their history and stuff. It just seems like when a developer is ready to start talking to the media in such a big way and start to show gameplay of their game and everything, it just kind of is very indicative of like, okay, well this game is definitely gearing up to get released soon. Um, you know, I would have been, I would have agreed that Uncharted 4 would be delayed if Naughty Dog was still completely silent in the same year that the game was getting released. But I, I don't know. That, that's at least how I saw it. I thought it was going to get released. But either way, uh, give them the time. You know, if they need the time, they need the time. That's just uh, the way it is. Especially with deadlines and stuff, developers uh, are under a lot more stress than you than you might think. Those are just some of the news stories I want to talk about with you all this week. Uh, guess what? Next week, uh, this coming week, Ryan on Gaming's finally coming back. I recorded a whole bunch of new videos. And uh, actually, let me know what other kind of videos you'd be interested in seeing. Now that my hours are down at work, I got more time to make videos. And I want to do more shit for this channel. So uh, by all means, let me know the kind of stuff you probably want to see. Give me some ideas. Something, man. I'm bored. I need stuff to do. I'm going to do YouTube. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Badegi. Thank you so much for talking with me. I'll see you guys all next Friday.